Hi, YouTube. Okay, welcome to my Astrology of Health and Nutrition, Part 2. And today I'm going to talk about organ systems and the planets that rule those organ systems and how you can just do a simple method of checking in your chart if those organ systems are afflicted and uh, if um, and what you can do about it. So... So to get started, I've written in below in the, in the description how to calculate the health chart, which is based on the sixth house, the house of health. And um, it would be called the, uh, the divisional chart in Western astrology or the, um, the sixth harmonic chart. In Vedic astrology, it's called the trim shamsha. So... Um, yeah, it's uh, and it's very precise. It changes about once every two or once every four every four minutes. It changes for each person. So um, I've written in the description how to calculate that. So if you calculate that chart and look at your birth chart, you'll have to look at both of both of these charts to see the health and um, and the organ systems and the planets that rule them. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Okay, so the sun is the first um, graha or planet. It's not—I know it's not a planet; it's a star, but we call them planets in astrology. And um, the sun rules the skeletal system, according to Parashara. The sun is the foundation, and it purifies. So, it rules the skeleton, which is the foundation of the body, and it purifies. So, it also rules the immune system. Um, so now um, when the sun is afflicted, then you will have broken bones, uh, you may have weak bones, uh, you may have a um, compromised immune system, and um, you don't fight off infection very well. The sun to be afflicted would either have to be joined Saturn, if it's joined Saturn in the chart, or if it's debilitated, meaning if the sun is in Libra, uh, that's not the only thing. Not all Libras are going to have uh, problems with their bones, but um, it does weaken the skeletal system when the sun is in Libra uh, because that it's, that's its fallen position or um, um, debilitated position, according to Vedic astrology. And, um, and also... Uh, if the sun is with Rahu or Ketu, which are the nodes of the moon, or um, and that's it. So <laughs> those three things, and you'll have to look at that in the birth chart, but also in your health chart. Um, okay, so and in each of these organ systems, uh, all of the planets rule a, a part of this organ system. So the sun is the skeletal system and the immune system. And the moon rules the blood that, that is supplied to the, to the bones of this uh, organ system. Mars rules the bone marrow. So if you have afflictions to Mars and the sun, you could have problems with your bone marrow. It's some kind of a bone disease. Then um, if Mercury, Mercury rules the spleen, where all the old blood cells go to be removed from circulation... And um, they are where white blood cells are produced so and stored. So that's uh, part of the immune system, the spleen. And then Jupiter rules the thymus gland, and that's where blood cells are turned into T cells. And T cells attack cells that, are, that harbor viruses or that have, in, have been infected by viruses. And that's the T cell's job is to destroy those cells. And Jupiter rules that within the skeletal immune system. Um, and then you have Venus rules cartilage and Saturn rules ligaments. Okay. Um, so if you have, you know, the sun and one of these planets afflicted, what I just mentioned, that that part of your skeletal system can be compromised or your immune system. And the next planet is the moon. And the moon rules the circulatory, respiratory, and urinary system. It's a lot. <laughs> rules all three of those. Uh, and so afflictions to the moon are... Uh, if the moon is joined Saturn, one of the nodes, or the sun, 
if you, you're born on a new moon, meaning the moon has joined the sun, it's, it's new, it's just starting, it's very dark, then um, you could have afflictions to the uh, urinary system, the respiratory or circulatory system. Also, if there's afflictions to the sign of cancer, if you have Mars in cancer, that's its debilitated position. It could also harm that system. Or if you have the moon in Scorpio in the first three degrees, because the moon has fallen or debilitated in the first three degrees in Scorpio, you could have problems with these systems. And um, also, if the moon is conjoined the sixth house cusp or the eighth house cusp, the sixth house, as uh, astrologers you astrologers out there probably know the sixth house is the sign of health and also the sign of disease. And it shows the, how, where we have to use our intelligence and our effort to overcome this disease. So whatever planet is conjoined the sixth house cusp is going to have um, some health issues with it. And you have to pay attention to that. And, uh, you know, um, change your diet or uh, fast or, you know, see a doctor if that, if it's showing that in your chart, um, that kind of organ system may be compromised in some way because the sixth house does, it's the house of effort, a lot of effort you have to make to overcome that. And so um, within the circulatory, respiratory, and urinary system, the moon rules the blood, the sun rules the heart. Uh, Mars rules the bladder and the prostate gland. Mercury rules the blood vessels. Saturn rules the lungs. Venus rules the kidneys. And Jupiter rules the liver. Um, so the liver is what cleans the blood. There are, some, there are a couple of organs that are in two different systems. They have a dual function, like the pancreas, for instance. Or um, what? there's another one. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but uh, the pancreas has two functions. It's also an um, endocrine, endocrine system gland in addition to um, helping with digestion. It releases en enzymes for digestion. So some of these I'm going to repeat twice under their respective systems, okay? All right, so the next one is Mars, and Mars rules uh, the nervous system. Uh, the limbic or the uh, brain and the spinal cord and the nerves. When Mars is afflicted, uh, then you're going to have some problems with your nerves and, um, you know, be nervous, anxiety prone, or, um, you know, have a brain injury or, or that kind of thing. So um, when, when Mars is afflicted, either Mars is in cancer, its debilitated position, or Mars is with Saturn. Mar Mars with Saturn is not good at all in, in, in it for anything. <laughs> um, I'll go into that in another video, but uh, um, Mars with Saturn is definitely compromised. Um, they really, they hate each other. And then um, Mars with one of the nodes with Rahu or Ketu will also harm that system in some ways. And then uh, within the nervous system, uh, Mars rules the brainstem, and um, the sun rules the basal nuclei. Saturn rules the spinal cord. The moon rules the cerebral cortex, and that's in the nervous system, but that also is in the endocrine system as well because it uh, secretes hormones. Jupiter rules the hypothalamus. Um, Mercury rules the thalamus, and Venus rules the cerebellum. Okay, so Mercury. Uh, Mercury rules the cognitive and skin systems. And uh, the skin is a barrier of the body against the environment, and Mercury rules all barriers and containers, and that's in uh, Parashara, Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra. So, <laughs> um, and then within the cognitive skin system, um, Mercury rules the sense of smell and the nose, and I was talking about this in the last video about the how um, certain planets energize uh, through the elements, they energize organs. This is completely different. Th this is what the planets actually rule, the organ systems they rule, but sometimes they correspond to the, what the element is energizing as well. So. 
So within the cognitive system, uh, Mercury rules the, the sense of smell in your nose. Mars rules sight and your eyesight. And um, yeah, your eyes. Uh, Jupiter rules hearing and the ears. Um, Venus rules taste and the tongue. Um, Saturn rules touch and your skin. Um, and the moon rules uh, the cerebral cortex. There it is again. And then uh, um, the sun rules the pineal gland in that system. And so now... Um, Jupiter rules the endocrine system, and this is the system responsible for your hormonal secretions. Um, afflictions to Jupiter will cause problems in this system, and um, if Ju Jupiter is in Capricorn, or that's its fallen, debilitated position, if uh, if Venus or not Venus, uh, if Mercury is in Pisces, Pisces is ruled by Jupiter, obviously. Um, not Neptune. Jupiter rules Pisces, and um, Mercury is is debilitated in Pisces, and it's afflicted. So it affl and it, it afflicts a, a sign of Jupiter. So that makes it you know not not as function as well. Okay, and then if Jupiter is conjoined Saturn, the Sun, one of the nodes, um, and that's it. Or it's conjoined the sixth or eighth house then you might have some issues with your endocrine system. And, um, and uh, within the endocrine system, Jupiter rules the hypothalamus. There it is again. Uh, Venus rules the ovaries and the testes. Mercury rules the thyroid. Uh, the moon rules the pituitary. Saturn rules the pancreas. Uh, the sun rules the parathyroid. And Mars rules the adrenals. Okay, and that's it. I covered it all. I covered all these. Yes, I did. So yeah, if um, whenever you see, whenever you see a planet with Saturn, Saturn in, according to Parashara, Saturn makes a planet starve. It starves a planet. So there's always going to be a little. There's going to be some health issues with a planet, no matter what, if it's joined Saturn. If a planet is joined the sun, according to Parashara, it's angry. That planet is frustrated and angry. That also can cause some health problems. Rahu and Ketu, the no nodes of the moon, the north node and the south node, Rahu causes, um, um, what is it? Uh, it's infection that is hard to diagnose. It's, um, Rahu causes smoke and it, you can't see what's going on. So uh, it will give you an infection um, that is very hard to diagnose, and K2, K2, the south node of the moon, will give you an infection by bacteria. So any planet joined K2 can possibly have bacterial infections. And so, okay, that's, that's the organ systems. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the signs and the rulership of the body parts for each sign, which is also, um, you know, very important. And it's basically uh, sections of the body. And the signs in um, Vedic astrology is, it's called Kala Purusha, the, the uh, man of time or the time man. In the Western tradition, it's called Adam Kadmon, um, which is the first man, and he has all of the uh, all of the signs or the Rashi's, and all of the animals or humans, as the, as the case may be, uh, ruling each section of the body. And you'll notice too. This is that I'm just going to point this out because it just popped into my head. All air signs are ruled by humans. <laughs> so if you have a lot of air signs, that's that's a human trait. Um, you know, Gemini is uh, the twins, or it's a man and a woman in the Vedic tradition. And Libra is a woman holding the scales, and um, and Aquarius is the man carrying the water. So I just wanted to inject that in there. I don't know why it it just popped in my head. But so anyway, um, I will uh, see you later, or probably tomorrow, and um, I'm going to get that video out about the signs and the rulerships of the sections of the body, and if certain signs are afflicted, then you can have injuries to that part of your body or infection, sickness in that part of your body. 
Okay, great. Thanks for watching.